Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we finally have a big budget Final Fantasy game working on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. This is Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion and it is the very ambitious remaster of the original PSP game. It features a new soundtrack, full voice acting, fully updated 3D graphics and a combat system that's very similar to Final Fantasy VII Remake. So today we are not running the Windows PC version that is being released through Steam. We're actually playing this through the Switch emulator reunions which recently got a pretty breakthrough new port on macOS. And this is a pretty big deal because macOS doesn't get that many AAA native ports. And so being able to play a game like this on day one, even if it is through emulation, bodes pretty well for the future. Today we're going to be looking at how well this game actually performs on Apple Silicon hardware. We'll be testing on the original MacBook Air with the M1 chip, as well as my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max. We'll also be looking at optimal graphics settings and also how to unlock 60 frames per second. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So first things first, if you want to be able to play this game on your Mac, then you need to buy the original game, load it into a hacked Switch, and then make a dump of your own game. Alternatively, it's possible to download backups. However, I'm not going to be able to help you with that. Switch games can often be located very easily on the internet. Next up, if you haven't downloaded Ryujinx for your Mac already, then make sure to follow the link in the description for my video tutorial on Ryujinx on Mac. So the first thing that's really striking about running this game through Ryujinx is basically how flawlessly it runs. There are no fixes, tricks, or hacks required to get this running optimally at 30 FPS. If you actually play this game on the Switch itself, it actually caps itself at 30 FPS. And when I'm playing this on the original M1 chip on my MacBook Air, it easily achieves 30 FPS at virtually all times. However, the biggest thing you're gonna notice is gonna be shader compilation stutter. Basically, every time a new spell, animation, or effect is shown for the first time, the game will actually pause while Ryujinx will compile the shader. However, once the shader is compiled, then it shouldn't happen and again however it's pretty annoying especially at the beginning of the game and here for example we're doing the octo slash limit break for the first time and it kind of stutters and pauses however now that the shaders have compiled when we do the octo slash limit break again there are no more stutters so my normal fix for this would be to use the Ryusak application in order to download Ryujink shaders that have been created by other people. However, this is not currently available as this is a brand new game. I've already generated 718 local shaders. And according to Ryusak, a shader cache with more shaders has already been submitted and is awaiting approval. And once it's approved, it's gonna be available to download. So we need to be a little bit patient. Or we can simply play the game and generate the shaders ourselves, knowing that these stutters are only temporary and only need to be generated once. And what about frame rate caps? So 30 FPS is pretty good but you'll be glad to know it's actually possible to unlock 60 FPS using a cheat. So what I want to do is to leave a link in the description for this cheat text code. All you need to do is to copy this into your clipboard. Then when we go back into the Ryujinx main menu, we can right click on the game and then click open mods directory. Within here, we're going to control click on the blank space and then create a new folder called cheats. Then we're going to paste that text file into here. And then when we right click on the game again, we can click manage cheats. So here we can toggle 60 FPS at the top. However, there are a whole bunch of other settings that you can tweak as well. And of particular interest is the ability to disable dynamic resolution, which is on by default. So now that we've loaded up the cheat, the next time we run the game, it's gonna be using the 60 FPS cap. So raising the frame rate cap is all well and good, but can the base M1 chip actually deliver enough frames to take advantage of this new limit? Well, the M1 Mac does a pretty solid job of getting very close to the 60 FPS mark. In these non-combat areas, we're getting around 55 FPS, and this is running at docked 1x resolution. When we're in combat in open areas, the frame rate will fluctuate between about 35 to 45 FPS. So this is still very much well worth doing. There's a huge difference between 45 FPS and 30 FPS. Even though we're not reaching that frame rate consistently, I think it's still worth having. However, if you did actually want to hit that 60 FPS cap, it is actually possible to do. All you need to do is to click on the bottom left-hand side and toggle between the docked and handheld modes. A handheld mode will push the resolution down a notch, possibly down to 720p, and it's gonna look a little bit more blurry. However, it does allow the M1 Apple Silicon Mac to reach that optimal more 60 fps so if you don't mind sacrificing some visual quality you can easily hit the 60 fps mark it's just going to make the graphics a little bit worse so how about a more powerful mac so this is the game running on my macbook pro with the m1 max chip and 32 gpu cores in this non-combat area we're hitting 60 fps at three times native resolution if we try to push it to four times native resolution then the performance does start to dip we're going from 60 down to 40 fps i think if you're using one of the more powerful m1 chips for example the m1 pro or the m1 max 
glass. The Nadox 2X resolution is probably going to be the best balance between visual quality and performance. At 2X, I never saw it dip under 58 FPS, so I consider this pretty solid and it's pretty amazing for the first release of the Switch emulator Wii U Jinx on the Apple Silicon Mac. So anyway, that is my quick look at performance of Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion on Apple Silicon hardware running through emulation. I hope you found these Mac emulation tips useful. Hopefully I'm going to get time to cover the Windows release of this game. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.